G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studio, and welcome to the fifth and final part of this Blender Beginner series, where I'll be talking about origin points and the 3D cursor. It's going to be a bit of a smaller tutorial. The 3D cursor begins its life in the center of the scene here, and it's the location where new objects are added to the scene, and it can also be used as a location to adjust an object's origin point or the location to pivot from when transforming an object. So if we hold down Shift and then right mouse button drag, this is going to move the 3D cursor. And then if we press Shift C, that's going to reset the 3D cursor back to the center of the scene there. If we press Shift S, that's going to open up the snap menu. And the snap menu has a number of options for both moving the cursor or the selected object. So, for example, if I move the object along the x axis, press Shift S and I can go cursor to selected, that's going to move the cursor along to the center of my object or where the origin point is. And then go shift C to move the cursor back to the center of the scene and shift S again. I can then go selection to cursor and it's going to move my cube back to the center of the scene where the cursor is located. This is really handy too in edit mode. So if I press tab and then select just a single vertex and press shift S, I can go cursor to selected, press tab again to get out of edit mode, and then if I go shift A to add an object, that's going to add an object right in the corner where that vertex is located. An object's origin point defines where the object is located in 3D space and is the small circle typically in the center of the object, but of course we can change this. The origin point is the default point at which an object is translated, rotated, or scaled. So with this object selected, I'm going to right mouse button and go down to set origin. So we have a number of different options here. I'm going to change the location of the 3D cursor to start with. So I'm just going to hold down shift, right mouse button to move it out. I'm going to right click, set origin, and change the origin to the 3D cursor. And we see that little dot that was in the center of the cube is now moved to the center of the cursor. So now if we rotate the object, it's going to rotate from that point, same as if we move it or scale it. If we right click again, set origin, we can move the origin point back to the geometry. So if we go set origin, origin to geometry, that's going to detect the center of our cube here and put the origin back to where it was before. Another method to change the origin point if you go into edit mode, press A to select everything and press G to grab, we can actually move the object without moving the origin point. So in edit move, the origin point does not move or change. Then we press tab, our objects over here, origin point is here, and we press N to look at our transform properties. We can see that we haven't actually technically moved the object, but we've moved the mesh of that object. To put it back where it was, we can right click, set origin, origin to geometry, go shift C to recenter the cursor, shift S and go selection to cursor and that'll put it back to where it was. So the pivot point defines the location of the transformation gizmo. By default, objects will pivot around the medium point defined by their origins. So it's gonna work best if I just duplicate this cube a couple of times and move them all together. So I'm just going to shift select all three at once. And if I press R to rotate, this is going to rotate around from roughly the center of the three cubes. So that's the median point. If I press period, we have a few options of the pivot point. So if I go to 3D cursor, it's going to rotate around the 3D cursor here. So R, rotate, it's going to rotate around the center of the scene where the cursor is. If I move the cursor, it's going to rotate from over there. Press period again, and we can change it to individual origins. So now our three objects are going to rotate independently around their own origin point. So I press R, and you can see they're all rotating individually. Another one which is useful, we could press period, and we can go around the active element 
So the active element is the one that's highlighted yellow as opposed to the two orange ones. And when we press R, it's going to rotate around the active origin point. Press period, and the default one was medium point. Thanks for watching this video. Give us a like and subscribe if you found it useful. And leave a comment if you have a question or your own blender tip. You can download a free set of PDF notes for this series from the Patreon link in the description. And if you want another tutorial series to try, take a look at our game character creation series. The first part is out now.